Have you in sight, Zeke? Go ahead. Dead on. Starting spin. Roger, Zeke. Spin demonstration of the F-100D was the natural follow-up to an extensive spin program on North American's earlier F-100 Super Sabre airplanes. Spin demonstrations were first carried out on the F-100A and C. In the beginning, standard NACA recovery technique was used. But in the course of performing more than 80 spins, a more effective recovery was found, a technique that is now standard for all F-100 airplanes. Zeke Hopkins, North American's engineering test pilot, flew the F-100D spin demonstration. Any squawks? No, everything's fine. An engineer himself, and with a background as an Air Force experimental test pilot at Wright-Patterson and Edwards Air Force Base, Zeke has gained invaluable first-hand information on spin characteristics of the F-100. Hi. I'd like to give you some of the history of our spin program and brief you on the proper recovery technique. In the early flight test, when we first spun the F-100A, we recovered by holding full opposite rudder with neutral stick. And then when rotation stopped, we dropped the nose and made a normal stall recovery. In spins on the C, we found that recovery required a different procedure. We put full aileron with the spin, full back stick, and full opposite rudder until rotation stops, and then we make a normal stall recovery. This technique also produced better recoveries in the A, and so we standardized it for all F-100 airplanes. It's all explained in the flight characteristics section of the Dash 1. Look at the handbook often and stay current on proper techniques and procedures. Don't depend on hearsay about those little things. It's the little differences that can get you into trouble. Know the steps for spin recovery and you'll be okay. Here's why ailerons are applied full width to spin. When you roll an F-100 into a low speed turn, the yaw produced by the ailerons is adverse. It tends to turn the nose in the opposite direction. At or near the stall, this adverse yaw force is powerful and can produce more yawing moment than the rudder. We utilize this adverse yaw to help stop spin rotation. In a spin, the airplane is turning rapidly. To recover from this condition, we apply ailerons full with the spin, and the resulting yaw is against the spin. Now we combine this with full opposite rudder and get a powerful anti-spin moment, which stops rotation. Once rotation is stopped, the nose drops rapidly and the airplane starts flying. Let's take a look at some film coverage of spins and recovery techniques. Spins were entered at 35,000 feet using standard F-100 procedure. For a left spin, full left rudder, full right aileron, stick all the way back. Following the Air Force spec requirement, controls were held for three full turns. spin recoveries were made in a maximum of two turns, a minimum of less than half a turn, using the standardized F-100 recovery technique. Ailerons full with the spin, stick held all the way back, full opposite rudder. This recovery took two turns following control application. In all, five complete revolutions were made. Analysis of spins is far from being an exact science as yet. That's why spin recoveries are demonstrated from intentionally aggravated spins. This particular three-turn left spin, although entered in exactly the same conditions as others, took only one turn to recover. 
In service, most fins in the F-100 encountered so far have been fighting a stall condition. If you do get into an unintentional spin, your first move is to get the throttle back to idle to avoid severe compressor stall and overtemping of the engine. If not sure of the spin direction, let go of all controls immediately. If you act quickly enough, the airplane will recover at once. But hanging on to the controls will aggravate the stall, and you'll have to use the standard spin recovery technique. If a pilot isn't sure of the direction of his spin, he can tell it from the needle on the turn and slip indicator. Then stick full with the spin, all the way back with both hands and full opposite rudder. Why both hands? just to make sure the controls are all the way in position. Give these control positions a chance to take hold. The first turn may look like recovery is not working. In fact, the spin may appear to be speeding up. But don't experiment. Hold the controls and rotation will stop. A low airspeed reading should not be cause for concern. The airspeed indicator is not malfunctioning. It will pick up after rotation stops. spin turn uses up about 1,800 feet. The airplane recovers in a stalled attitude. A normal stall recovery is then made, and it takes from six to 8,000 feet to regain level flight. Well, that's the story on spin recovery technique. Don't forget your stall warnings. Yawing, rolling, and pitching are the things you want to watch for. They won't come in at the same sequence or rate as in a straight ahead stall. They'll be faster and closer together in accelerated flight. Don't forget the adverse yaw of the ailerons at low speed. Anytime you find yourself running out of ideas and airspeed at the same time, leave the ailerons alone. You can pick up a wing quite nicely with rudder at low speed, so until the airplane starts flying again, don't use a lot of aileron. If you do get into a spin, remember the standard F-100 recovery procedure. Retard the throttle to idle. Let go of all controls and determine spin direction. Full aileron with the spin, full aft stick. Get them all the way in, use both hands. Full opposite rudder. And when rotation stops, a normal stall recovery. The F-100 is a good bird. Knowing your equipment and recognizing the stall warnings will keep you out of a spin. If you do get into one, the standard F-100 recovery procedure will get you out. That's the story. Stay current and stay around.